Sí. Perfect. Okay, good afternoon. Um, I will talk about um, a project uh, in a different field, but still in the area of data-driven research and data-driven knowledge extraction. The topic is educational data science and particularly data-driven support for learning design. I will explain what I mean by this uh, very soon, in a moment. First, uh, I would like to talk about the people involved and how what I will present is basically the vision or vision towards we are working together in the context of several projects, including the Maria de Maetsu initiative, um, with collaboration um, between two, between two uh, groups in the department. Then I will introduce what I mean by data science in education and the specific, the specific scope of the of the research and then the work that we are doing and some conclusions. I start. So um, in this um, initiative there are several people, uh, PhD students, a developer coming uh, from the GTI, the Interactive Technologies Group, huh? and then a collaboration in the context of the Maria de Maetsu um, with Anders Johnson from the Artificial Intelligence Group. Um, we are currently co-supervising a master thesis by Shari Amacharige, which is around, okay? And she will continue, she is now finishing a master thesis, but she will continue later with the PhD thesis under our co-supervision in the context of the Maria de Maetsu initiative. But what I will present somehow builds on top of a previous, the results of a previous project, which is called METIS, a European project that finished last year, where we developed uh, an infrastructure for teachers to support learning design. I will explain what I mean by this later. And then currently we have three projects uh, that somehow connects to the vision that I will present and the work that we are currently starting to do. One national project that is called Reset, which is about how technology can support active learning at scale. A project funded by Resercasha, um, which is around now data science supporting educational design and working with the schools. And then the Maria de Maetsu initiative, which is complementing the work that we are doing in the Resercasha project and also working with teachers in workshops, as I will explain. So we've seen uh, how data science can be applied to many different fields uh, to extract knowledge. We've seen this in this Maria de Maetsu uh, workshop, uh, how this is being applied to different fields. In the domain of education, we can also collect data uh, coming basically from students' interactions with uh, technologies that are supporting learning activities. So for example, we all know these learning management systems, virtual learning environments uh, in the context of our institution at our university, we are using Moodle. And this type of virtual learning environments are collecting interaction of our students with the system. And this data can be served to understand and eventually improve the learning experiences that we are designing for our students. This area of research in the learning technologies field is called learning analytics or educational data science. The, uh, the analysis of this data is being used in the community for multiple purposes. Uh, probably the most popular purpose is to understand a student or, or support student retention uh, by understanding reasons for group outs or alerts for students that may eventually drop out so that the institution, the teacher can do any type of intervention. But there are other purposes such as, for example, supporting uh, self-regulation of students by showing students data about their own progression. They may reflect about their progress and eventually self-regulate their behavior in the way they are engaging with a particular course or a learning activity. In the field, we see that there is an interesting potential of connecting the learning analytics, the data collected from the activities of students with the pedagogical intent, with the intention that the teacher has uh, when designing the activities that uh, will 
later experience your students. If we align the, the pedagogical intent with the analytics data, then we can better understand to what extent the teacher's intentions are actually being accomplished uh, by the students. So th there is an inter interesting potential there that we are exploring in this, in, in the vision that I will show. But what is learning design? The learning, learning design is the field that studies uh, how to support teachers in the design of, we say, potentially effective, effective learning activities. So those environments that uh, support students in the learning process in the best possible way. And we say uh, with ICT, with information and communication technologies, both from the perspective of that the activities can be supported by technologies and that technologies can support teachers in the design process. So there are learning design tools that is scaffold that support teachers in the thinking in the design thinking process of creating activities that are potentially effective. So for example, you see in this slide uh, a figure of an authoring tool that visually supports teachers in the design of collaborative learning activities that are based on best practices, there are pedagogical design patterns um, for collaborative learning that have been widely studied in the area of education for their potential effectiveness. So these kind of authoring tools, of this learning design tools, scaffold teachers in the creation of uh, potentially effective collaborative learning activities. These authoring tools, um, in many cases, uh, at the end have the designs in formats that are computational representations, eh? typically XML, but other formats as well. These computational representations enable the sharing of the design. It's a way of documenting the design so that they can be shared with other teachers. They can be reused by other teachers and they can also support redesigning because we have documented the designs that have been used in previous courses. And because they are computational representations, they can be also used to automatically configure, automatically set up the learning environments, virtual learning environments, learning management systems such as Moodle. Yeah? This is an important research project, uh, problem that we are studying in the context of the community, but there are already some solutions uh, that we consider in our research. And there are, in the community, they have been provided multiple uh, learning design authoring tools. The issue is that this variety of learning design authoring tools have limited functionality, so they are supporting different pedagogies. I mentioned before this authoring tool for collaborative learning. There are authoring tools for other pedagogical approaches or with different, using different representations or supporting different phases of the design process. And these tools are typically oriented towards a single teacher, as an, a single user. Uh, they are not having community support or they are not supporting co-design by a team of teachers. So this is why we have been working in the recent past in a community environment for, for teachers that is supporting teachers in the sharing of learning designs. Uh. The, um, we call it Ellie Shake. Uh. This was the initial initiative around support and collaboration between teachers. We extended LD Shake in the context of the METIS European project that I mentioned before by integrating and extending learn, uh, learning design tools, existing open source learning design tools provided by the community. Many of these providers were partners of the METIS uh, project. Eh? So the learning design community joined in this, in this project to provide their tools and they were integrated in this system. Just some screenshot so that you see how it looks like. So this is how you can see the, a list of designs created in the, in the integrated learning design environment. They can be, they have been created using one of the authoring tools integrated in the environment. This is the list of authoring tools. So there are a number integrated and they can be tagged. Uh, you can see how many times they have been revised, meaning edited by different members of the team working co-designing one learning design, the comments associated to it, etc. This is how you can see one of the authoring tools integrated, the previous one to support collaborative learning. This is how it's integrated within the community environment. And 
here you can see how in the system the environment is also supporting versioning of the design. So if a teacher reuses a design created by a colleague, then we track this, uh, this reuse of the previous learning design, we track the versioning, and depending on the tool, we also track the changes because they are computationally represented so that we can uh, check for differences. This is uh, the logical, the architecture of, of the environment. Huh? I won't um, go into the details, but you can see how the different aspects of the, of the tool are, are supported. So there are the social components supporting community collaboration between teachers within the community and sharing, creation of designs uh, using different tools. So the environment is providing access to tools, to learning design tools that sometimes are actually part of the environment itself, other times are, they are accessed as external services through an, an API. Um, and how the designs created, those that are computationally represented, can be implemented into virtual learning environments through components that support the, the mappings between the different formats provided by the authoring tools and supported by the virtual learning environment. So this is the, the web-based portal that provides a common uh, co visualization contextual environment for, for the teachers to visualize the tools and all the community uh, features. And this is where the student will access the virtual learning environment and other tools that may be proposed to support the activities in the learning design. The integrated learning design environment um, was uh, distributed using an open source license, so it's available in GitHub. We have also an API with a debug environment, which is, has been used even beyond the METIS project, so by third parties, not only partner members, very recently by um, tool provider, let's say, other researchers working in the field, in, in particular in Australia. We also have manuals, technical admin manuals. Huh? Several installations to support uh, different communities. I think we have over 10 communities. Even one installation is, is not hosted by us, but has been uh, installed in the machines of a university, in, in this case, the University of the Balearic Islands, um, by following, um, downloading the code and following the manuals. And some, I have to say also some support from our side, but it has been work okay. Um, these communities, uh, the size of these communities vary. So we have small communities working together around learning design or more larger communities that in our case means hundreds uh, of participants. In total, we have thousands of designs. So this is the amount of data that there are in the communities. Of course, uh, in this environment, which is a community environment for learning design, we have different types of data. Hmm? We have community data, so the interactions that happens at the level of the community, how people share the designs, how they work together in crediting a design, in co-designing, etc. We have also the data uh, that are actually the, the, the designs, the computational representations of the design, so this data is something that we can analyze. And we could also have, it's not already in the environment, but we could also have data coming from the an admin of the designs by the students. So the students access to the virtual learning environments, they interact with the activities, we can collect this data and also consider this data in an integrated way in the environment so as to provide learning analytics of their, uh, of associated to the learning designs, the pedagogical intent. So our um, goal in, this, in, in, in the Maria de Maizu project, uh, in connection especially with the Resercasa project, is to extend the infrastructure so that we can have a data-driven support to learning design in different ways. Eh? As I said, we have the three different types of data. Community data, the, the data which are the designs themselves, and the learning analytics data, data coming from the interaction of the students with the environments. <coughs> this is why we propose a framework we call analytics uh, layers for learning design, where we consider these three different types of, of data and analytics that can support understanding, uh, that can yeah, support understanding and the, uh, and the learning design process. 
So these layers uh, has the, the community analytics layer, which is related to the activity of the community, somehow in line with the presentation we have this morning by Vicente, but the, here the, uh, the learning design artifact is the object in which they, they work together, not that much a discussion forum, but is again a community where there is activity of the, of the teachers um, by sharing and um, co-designing uh, learning activities. Then the learning design uh, analytics layer, which is the one related to the pedagogical decisions that are represented in the learning designs. Um, the layer that is related to the actual uh, actions, data coming from the students, the action of the students with the, with the activities uh, supported by virtual learning environments. So I will go one by one of these layers, uh, explaining uh, more details about uh, the data that we are considering in there and the type of questions within this data can answer from the perspective both of understanding the learning design activity and supporting that, uh, the learning design process. So in terms of learning design community analytics, uh, the goal would be understanding the community behavior and then understanding to what extent this data about the community behavior could be used to trigger orientation and inspiration of the participants of the teachers participating in this, in the community kind of recommendation like uh, approach. Data includes the tools that they are being used uh, out of the many learning design tools integrated, which actual tools they are actually using, um, what types of designs are being created, which tags they use, how they are actually working together in design, so who are the co-authors, um, how they behave in terms of edits, viewing designs created by others, also, if they are actually reusing and therefore creating versionings of designs, social ratings to the designs. The types of questions that this data, analytics of these types of data could answer, uh, includes which designs are more popular in, in the community. So for example, here we have social network analysis done by, by Costas over there, doing his PhD thesis in this topic. Here we have a network of uh, the views, uh, how designs are being viewed in the community. So here we can see which designs are more popular within the community, and probably this means that these designs are of high quality for others to consider to inspire the teaching practice. Other questions are which teachers are working on designs for a particular pedagogy so that they probably are candidate to collaborate with me because I'm interested in uh, starting to use that pedagogy, for example, or which has been the evolution of a design that has been reused in the community, um, how this may inspire me, or which, to which tools uh, I should think of exploring because they are better received by other teachers in the community. As the design analytics layer, um, the goal would be to categorize, somehow label the learning designs and support awareness and reflection about the design decisions along the, the design process. Data includes the objectives, uh, the, the type of task, the, the, the different social planes, whether the activities are, are individual, collaborative, whether they are happening in the classroom, outside the classroom, which type of resources they are, uh, they are using, um, which type of tools, the expected uh, length of time for the task, these type of design decisions that teachers make when creating a learning activity. No? And the questions that these uh, types of, the, uh, the analysis of the types of data could answer is, include, is the accumulated percentage of individual and group tasks proposed balance at this art? Are, Mm, will the students uh, be proposed to use sufficient variety of resources and tools? Is the time estimated so far for the learning task reasonable? This kind of um, design thinking uh, um, for teachers when they are in the process of making uh, pedagogical decisions. As I said, the, this type of analysis of the learning design could also serve as labels that could fit the community in order to further categorize the designs being shared in the community. 
The layer, the linear analytics layer, uh, as as gold, uh, to have to provide an accumulated evidence of the design impact, uh, so that if we know the impact of a design in the actual students in a particular context, uh, this could provide, and if whether if this learn in design, this learning activity is being used in different contexts, then we may have accumulated evidence of the impact of a learning design. So, so we will move to, towards data-driven understanding of learning in contrast to, to, a, to a more theory-driven uh, understanding of the impact of learning. This uh, evidence could support awareness and reflection about the effects of the designs and their actual redesign, no? if we have this accumulated evidence. Data um, that um, are related to this layer includes snapshot data capturing relevant milestones that we can define, such as access to resources, completion of tasks, data about the progress, well, for example, participation in discussion forums, performance, and others. Huh? This depends on the learning intent, on the learning design intent huh? of the learning design. The questions um, that these types of data could answer includes, uh, is the average time length used to complete a task close to the expectation? So if we design that amount of time uh, in the learning design as expected for the students to complete the activity, is this really aligned? Or we should redesign the activity because uh, it's not re been really experienced by the students that we intended. Is the design leading to uh, as unsatisfactory engagement or performance? Is the design engaging sufficiently students with a particular, uh, a particular specific profile? These types of questions. And as I said, the, this accumulated uh, analysis could also fit as labels to the community somehow or as analytics ac accompanying the, the designs. But they can also support the design process itself. So for example, uh, we are working here with Anders in the master thesis of Ishari in the support of intelligent group formation. Intelligent group formation that has into account the constraints in the pedagogical method, but also constraints coming from the data analysis. So for example, what is the progression of the student? And therefore, probably I could propose a different, uh, a different grouping. No? So this is the, um, the vision of the three layers uh, to understand the non-support learning design, what we are doing right now, which is the ongoing and the planned work in this context. So we are currently analyzing the data that we already have in the environment, uh, but we are also extending the infrastructure. We are also extending the infrastructure so as to collect additional uh, data. Um, also thinking about what type of visualizations of the data could actually support the, um, the participants in these communities at the three levels. We, we will also want, of course, to understand the effect in, in the teaching practice, if there is any effect in the teaching practice, if they are having these kinds of visualizations, community design and learning analytics visualizations. For gathering data and experimentation, uh, we have a kind of research practice partnership with uh, schools in the context of the Reser Casa project. In the Maria de Maestro project, we are establishing a set of workshops for teachers. Some of these teachers can individually volunteer to add also to participate in this, in this research practice partnership, so as to participate in the actual research. Um, we have a website that we just announced here, uh, it's very recent, we just uh, created it. Uh, it will be improved, but it has already the basic information we want the teachers and the schools to access about the, the, uh, the workshop that we propose, how they can collaborate with us in the research, the terms and conditions that relate to ethical issues. Because in this context, as, as Monica was explaining before, there are a number of delicate issues that have to do with ethics, especially at the level of the, of, of the students' data. So we are also uh, studying and addressing this aspect with, uh, with care. Um, at the level of the research community or our environment, we had we hosted learning analytics talks and workshops in, in April. There were two guests coming from Australia, taking advantage that they were in Europe for the learning analytics conference. They came here and get, um, um, did some presentations and workshops. 
I organized uh, with them a workshop in the Learning Analytics Conference, Learning Analytics Across Physical and Digital Spaces, meaning uh, activities that are happening in the physical space, but also supported by technologies. And I'm organizing a workshop in the European Conference on Technology and Learning next September in the topic of connected learning design and learning analytics, which would be very exciting, I, I hope. So conclusions. Um, we are building on our previous work on community environment for learning design using multiple tools, computational representations of the learning designs. And we are currently moving towards a data-driven understanding and support for learning design. We propose, we are addressing that, that from a three analytics layers framework, uh, considering community analytics, design analytics, and learning analytics, and the interplay between them. We see many exciting opportunities, but we, we know that we are just starting and there is a lot of work that we can do there, um, probably even more collaborations in the context of the department along these lines. So this is it. Thank you. So can you give us some preliminary numbers of, of the number of students that, that subscribe to the number of courses, some, something about that? No, um, as I said, this is the, the data that we have uh, now is more about, is about teacher, teachers participating in the community. So how they create designs and how they share and command the designs between them. So it's teacher data. And we have the artifacts, the designs that they create, that are of course owned by them, but they are in the they are openly share. We also support licensing; they can select the licenses for the designs and all these things. But uh, but we are currently not having data about the students. So this is how we want to extend the infrastructure. So we have we we we, we do right now is we deploy the activities created in the environment. So they are we have the activities computationally represented and we are able of automatically setting up Moodle, no? for example. But this is all we do. We don't get back the data from the learning environment. And, and this is the, the, the idea that we have. It's a, it's a challenge, but it's a very interesting idea of get, getting data back to the environment so that we do the analytics and that we use also this analytic to document the designs, to accumulate evidence about their impact, to, to support reuse and redesign in the context of the community. But right now, we don't have any, I, I don't know, uh, we have run several experiments and small scale experiments. So we do have some data, I mean, but we have not uh, articulated the infrastructure right now in a way that it is done. And we would say that we have a significant uh, data set around that. Mm. But in any case, even when we will have that, uh, probably we will be able to show uh, um, accumulated analytics, but pr most probably, well, for sure, we, we won't be able to share the data sets in an open way. Probably we have to follow a similar, or this is what we are thinking, uh, following a similar strategy as Monica explained before.